Howdy folks, Benji here, welcome to High Noon. Today we're talking about how to replace the porn thrill, the thrill you know, the addiction cycle, the addictive nature of pornography, how to replace it. This is part of a seven stage process for how to quit porn in masturbation for good. And I'm gonna give you access to that full seven stage process video right after this one, so stick around for that. Now my goal in this video is to help you guys be so excited and thrilled about your life and so that porn is just not an issue for you anymore. It's just an afterthought. I often say that as long as your life is boring, porn will always be part of your life. Now remember that, as long as your life is boring, porn will always be part of your life. That's gonna be on my tombstone, I swear. But the reason I'm saying that is because if your life were truly filled with excitement and thrill and things that you're really passionate about, then porn would just kind of be an afterthought. You might remember and recall the last time that you were just not urged at all to go back to porn. You just woke up one day and you were like, you know, I haven't thought about porn in a while, like months or weeks, what, what happened, right? And then the very next day, you kind of spiraled and you fell off the cliff on the deep, deep end. What happened there, my guy, my friends, is that probably you were really excited about life. You were doing something. You were really connected with people. And that's really more in line with your North Star and what your North Star goal is. And that's what we're going to be getting into today. But the first really important distinction that we have to make, and I think will really help you a lot, is that there is a difference between recovery and abstinence. When we're talking about recovery, we are talking about replacing the habit. We're talking about helping you heal and recover to the place that you don't need porn anymore. The reason you watch porn, guys, if you haven't noticed already, is because you're trying to alleviate and escape negative emotions through stress, anxiety, depression, boredom, maybe all of those things combined. And of course, porn is addictive, and of course, it's arousing and all of that, but that is a factor, but it's not the reason that you guy, you my friend, watch porn. So if we realize that the recovery process is, is, is it is necessary to replace the habit so that it's not an issue, then that makes a distinction between what abstinence is. And you might be familiar with abstinence because there's, there's literally like millions of people online. If you go to like the NoFap subreddits, I mean, God bless them. I think it's all tremendous work. But a lot of people, if you really look closely, are just operating at the level of, oh, I'm on day 65, I'm gonna make it to day 365. And as soon as I get there, then I'm gonna get all these benefits of no, NoFap and all that. The reason that doesn't work, guys, is because as long as you're just pushing yourself with sheer brute force and strength, and counting the days essentially until your next slip up. If you think about it logically, right? The reason that we count is because we're not confident that we can beat it for good. And basically you're counting your days until the next time you're gonna slip up so that you can say that you've you achieved a certain metric of success with this NoFap thing. That's what abstaining is. And the reason that you can go very long and then suddenly you're, you find yourself knee deep in a porn watching session the next day, and you're like, what happened to my streak? Like I was doing so good and suddenly I slipped into the abyss, into the black hole of porn, into that rabbit hole, it's because you're experiencing abstinence, you're abstaining, but you weren't recovering, you weren't healing, and you weren't replacing that thrill and that need and the desire to use porn and go back to it. So the purpose of this video is to help you identify your North Star. Now we talk about the North Star a lot here at High Noon. And it's really the thing that, if I were to paint a picture, an analogy, a metaphor for you guys, your porn recovery journey is like climbing a mountain. It's a big old mountain, we're all climbing it, some of you guys are at the very bottom and some of you guys are in, on the way up, right? And if you're at the very bottom, it's very hard to see the top of the mountain because it's covered in clouds. It's covered in, and you're just kind of slipping in the ditches and you're in the mud and you're just trying to stand up and get your act together because you've spiraled down, <laughs> down this rabbit hole and watched porn so much. But once you actually start climbing this mountain, you start to see the top a little bit. And, and at, the, at the top, beyond the top is a bright star you know, just to take the analogy a little farther. It's a bright star that is so beautiful and so enticing and so exciting, most importantly for you, that it literally drags you through the mud and it brings you to the top of this mountain. It drags you through the ditches, through the relapses, through the depression, through the shame, through guilt and all of that to bring you to the very top of this mountain. And when you get to that mountain, that's when you feel in full light of the sun. That's when you're living at high noon. And the goal for you guys uh, in this scenario is to help keep you maintaining your footing at the top of this mountain at all times. And many times it's hard to do it because it's a very slippery slope. You know, you might be doing really well one day and then the next day you find yourself knee deep in a porn session, like I said, and you don't know how you got there. It's because you let yourself slide. And we, know, we all know that experience. So to tie this entire metaphor together, your North Star is a thing in your life that you are so just excited about and you're so thrilled about and you can't even sleep at night because you're so passionate about doing this thing and, and accomplishing this thing and becoming the person, the man or woman that you wanna be. 
And that excitement is what just makes porn an afterthought for you. And the more you grab onto that excitement and really go full force 120% into that, porn doesn't become an issue. That's how you maintain your footing at the top of this mountain. My friends, I'm here to tell you that in the past, I believe you have actually found yourself at the tip of this mountain. This is also another paradigm shift for a lot of people. You have been here at the top of this mountain. You just don't remember and you didn't recognize you were there. Like I said, when was the last time that porn was an issue for you? You just, you went for like a year or, or like you were on a program or, you know, like you're doing service or something, or you were just really connected with people in your life, or you were just working on a project that you really cared about or a business maybe. That was you at the top of this mountain, guys. So the goal becomes not, you know, when I get to X, Y, Z days of, you know, not fapping, then I'll be successful. No, you have to, your success is how do you keep your integrity and maintain your footing here and live in the light of high noon. And when you get there, what we found with a lot of people that we work with is that it's a, it's a very addictive feeling to be there at high noon. It's a very addictive feeling. And anytime you're a little bit off, you do have a little bit of a mishap or slip, you try very hard to get back there because you don't like being not having any shadows in your life. So my assignment for you guys is to write this down. It takes a little bit of work to get to know what your North Star is. And that's what our groups at High Noon are for. So if you wanna check out one of those groups or programs, check out the de description below. But once you start climbing this mountain a little bit, then the, the, the air starts to clear, the clouds clear a little bit, and you can actually see what your North Star is. And once you find that, I want you to write it down. Write it down today, as soon as you finish this video. What am I really excited about? Like what? am I called to do? What is my purpose? What has God put me on this planet to do? What is the only thing that I can contribute to this world? And maybe you know what it is, but you've been a little afraid to, because of fear and doubt and uncertainty and anxiety, or just I'm too busy with life. Guys, I'm busy. <laughs> I My kids are, you know, whatever the excuses, but just put it on paper and be like, this is what I'm here to do. And I'm gonna go full force into that. And when you get that snowball rolling, my friends, you will be unstoppable. And porn will just not be an issue for you for you anymore. At night, when you usually slip up and watch porn, or in the morning when you slip up and watch porn, your first thought when you come home from school or from work is not gonna be, oh, I'm bored, I deserve something. Let me go, you know. Your first thought is gonna be, man, I really wanna work on this project. I really wanna do this thing. And I think it's really important to identify that. What I found in my groups is that when I help people uh, mentor people to find their North Star. I ask them to find an identifiable singular project to work on that is in line with your North Star, right? Let's say your North Star is I want to become a a very, a man of, like I'll use myself example, right? My North Star is like, I want to be a man of genuine character, a man who who is of service to other people, selflessly serves people in the unique ways that I have experienced in unique ways that I contribute. So how does that look? The project I work on is making videos for you guys. Like the project I work on is doing mentoring for people to help them quit porn and actually uh, get married and have a successful marriage. So that's what I care about. And the project I work on is YouTube, podcasts. Like that's what I work on. So when you find your project you work on, it's kind of like if I take the analogy a little bit further, it's like you're building a house on top of the mountain. Like you're building a foundation there so that you can live there permanently and not just be, you know, slipping one way or the other in this mountain, but actually have a strong foothold and a foot stance on this mountain at all times. And this house you can build and you can live there eternally with your friends, with your family. And I hope that's bringing, uh, painting a good picture for you guys. So the third thing I wanna talk about is really more about the brain science stuff. Now this is not gonna bore you. I promise it's gonna be interesting. I don't like the brain facts of like porn and dopamine and all that kind of stuff, but this is really important because there is a way to replace the urge and the trigger to watch porn and to act out, right? You might think that you will never be in a place where you know, you see something on the internet and Instagram or wherever, and it triggers you to to act out sexually, masturbate or whatever. You might think like that's not possible, but it is. How do I know that? Because my friends, you have trained yourself over very many, many years. You have trained your brain, let's say, you have trained your brain to be addicted and associating those that content content as sexual activity. As you've trained and tricked your brain to think and that it's somehow essential to your survival as a human. The thing is, guys, porn has nothing to do with sexuality, if you haven't noticed. It's a brain trick. In, in other words, what it's called is dopamine. The dopamine, dopamine is telling you that this activity watching porn or seeing triggery content online is somehow essential to your survival. And you've tricked yourself through masturbating to that kind of content. But when you realize that, essentially, it's a, it's 
trickery. I mean, there's psychological reasons why you use porn as well, but your brain's way of telling you that this is really important can be changed. Like I said, you don't have to be like this forever. You didn't used to be, you can recall maybe years ago, maybe decades ago, you didn't used to be always addicted to porn. You didn't always have these triggers all the time, but it was something that you trained yourself to do over many time, many years, but you can actually train yourself. This is what I'm going to talk about. Number three, you can train yourself to be unaddicted to that stuff. So anytime you do see your triggery content or anything online, you won't even budge. You won't even tinkle a little bit, right? And isn't that the ultimate goal that you can just live your life without being scared all the time of what, you know, of course we should keep our guards up all the time, but wouldn't you just not be like to not be afraid that around any, every corner, there might be something that's going to cause you make you go back to porn, right? Cause you to go back that, down that rabbit hole. Wouldn't you like to not be running through a minefield constantly or a, or a war zone where bullets are flying past your head all the time? Wouldn't you like to just live at the top of this mountain in a beautiful house with your family, with your friends, with your pets, with the people that you love and have your, your, your focus so fixated on your goal than your North Star that it causes you to live your entire life in integrity, your entire life according to where your mission and your purpose is in life. Isn't that what the ultimate goal is? So the reason I wanna talk about dopamine is because when you do feel those urges, a practice you can do, and this does work, is when you feel the urge and you, you have that feeling come over you, like, oh, like I, I can feel it's coming, you know, like I feel like the, the urge is coming tonight or something. What you can do is you stand up, you walk away, and you retrain your brain to do some other activity in those moments. In that very moment, you stand up, you walk away, you do another activity that, get this, produces dopamine for your brain. Magical. So you can retrain your brain to be addicted to another activity that also produces dopamine. What is something that produces dopamine? What is an activity that pr produces dopamine for you? Anything essentially that is actually essential to your survival, in other words, something that is related to your well-being, something that's related to your health, your mental health, something that's related re related to your career, making a making a, a living, your skill set, something that you offer the world, your mission, your purpose, whatever you want to do to serve people, or something that is related to relationships, such as your relationship with your spouse, or such as preparing for marriage, preparing to be engaged, and through doing that, you're focusing your energy on your sexuality and your sexual relationship. If you are married, if you're in a relationship, you focus your energy and do something that produces a real hit of do dopamine and actually attracting yourself and your brain and your spirit to your spouse. And through doing that, you can actually, guys, replace the dopamine hit. And this is ultimately what it's going to take for you to come to a place where you are not urged or triggered anymore to go back to porn. Again, to recap cap all of this, this is all about recovery, my friends. Long gone are the times where you can just no fap for X amount of days and expect that you'll just be able to give porn, give up porn for good. As long as you're doing that, you will always be counting the days until you, you act out again and you will never recover because you have to learn that recovery is different from abstinence and recovery takes replacing the habit. Recovery takes identifying the single reason why you use porn, why you masturbate and addressing that. And when you do that, you realize that your porn habit, your addiction has nothing to do with porn. Let me say that again. Your porn habit has nothing to do with pornography because porn is just pixels on a screen. It's not sexual at all. But in fact, your porn habit has everything to do with the reason that you use porn. And when you identify that, in most cases, usually there is a singular thing in your life, a singular habit or, or stressor in your life that if you identify and fix that, it will dramatically increase the chances that you'll be able to be porn for good. So usually there is a singular thing in your life that you can address, whether it's schoolwork, whether it's your career, whether it's your boss, whether you have no time to even follow your dreams, right? Or maybe the biggest stress in your life is that you feel a lack of purpose in your life. You feel purposeless and you're not really going the direction that you want. And if that's the case, my friends, you've got to fix that. You've got to stand up and do something about it. I hope this video is helpful for you guys. I want you guys to watch the other videos on this channel, uh, the foundations to actually help you get here. I'm gonna put a seven step process right here uh, and down in the description so you guys can check that out. Be sure to subscribe and also like this video if it's helpful. I do love you guys and I wish you all the best. Take care.